And just like that, we are back with another episode of the Green Table Podcast. Shout out to everybody who's in the building. Make a shout out to y'all. I see everybody who is in the back chat. I see y'all already chatting it up. So y'all know the routine. Go ahead and roll you one up. Go ahead and get your vape pens ready. Go ahead and get your blow torches ready because I know y'all been extracting y'all life away to the point that y'all done extracted your soul away. Some of y'all be so faded off them goddamn extracts. But yeah, go ahead and roll you one up. Light you one up. Pull you some of that good old Delta 9 syrup or whatever it is that y'all doing nowadays and we'll be right back. Well, for starters, we ain't gonna act like I ain't just see you walk away from your phone, tablet, or computer without hitting that like button. See, this is why don't nobody like you. Y'all, y'all don't like supporting, and it's, it's free. Just hit the like button, go ahead and subscribe, and hit that notification bell. I'm tired of watching y'all through this screen walk away from your damn tablets and your other social media devices and not hit the damn like button. So like, subscribe, comment. Let's go! Once you take that first step, ain't no turning back. Death Lord, Veg God, welcome to the green table. Yeah. I I don't hear all of the talking cause I just be working. I'm trying to get to this bag. I see these dudes and they move like they don't got no purpose. So they all still living bad. I make decisions, that's gonna raise the quota. You live a life that's just above the water. Phone number, Jenkins, system, Motorola. Now let's keep coming as I'm getting older. Yeah, I know my destiny since I was young. So I knew that my mom made a soldier. Yeah, I know some people throw stones, but then they get mad when you throw back a folder. Huh? Some people call it the streets. I call it the Arctic. It could get no colder. Wake up, I had to shake up some demons and start my day right like a couple. Folders. I let my team in the air like they Simba I could care less if they ever remember Ask me for breakfast, I want them to eat So I kept them for lunch and I kept them for dinner Give them the game, I'll control and they temper Don't let it get under your skin like a splinter They steal all your light and they laugh when it's dimmer Just let it all go and don't let it get bent up Boss moves thinking you gotta stay centered When you live life, always fuck the pretender Ask what I'm smoking, it's probably that Kimber But I'll be so faded, can hardly remember Work with that paper, so call me your printer A hundred P's right in the back of the Sprinter Stay on your hustle, it's bound to deliver You know my location and I'm never gonna give up I don't hear all of the talking Cause I'll just be working I'm trying to get to this bag I see these dudes and they move Like they don't got no purpose So they all still living bad I make decisions That's gonna raise the quota You live a life That's just above the water Phone number Jenkins System Motorola Now let's keep coming As I'm getting older Yeah See, I'm crocking, they just trying to watch how I make it. One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking. Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated. Said, fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it. Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing. Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun. Visuals, you see it clear like it's LASIK. If shit don't work out, then it's back to the base. See, I'm crocking, they just trying to watch how I make it. One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking. Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated. Said, fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it. Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing. Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun. Visuals, you see it clear like it's Sick. If shit don't work out, then it's back to the base. Ain't one fuck with me when I was down at the bottom, so don't come around and be asking no favors. Not trying to link and I don't wanna tap it, so don't have no hopes of you seeing me later. Laughing my way as I go to the bank with a Gucci bag full just to drop off this paper. Cruising with all the movers and shakers. You know if I'm about to do it, it's major. Just got the navy blue clock with the laser. Hop in my Bentley and block out the haters. Music be coming off top, ain't no paper. Smoking some gas, it look just like the Lakers. I do like Betty and just get my kick up. Trying to do 200k on the Wake up, work every day and I won't take no pay cut You can keep clocking, I swear it don't phase I'm clocking, they just trying to watch how I make it One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun Visuals, you see it clear like it's LASIK If shit don't work out, then it's back to the base See, I'm clocking, they just trying to watch how I make it One of a kind, so it ain't no mistaking Music on slapping, this shit ain't outdated Said fuck all the rules, if you make it, I'll break it
work it. Full steam ahead, I ain't down with no pacing. Whipping the booth and come out with that Cajun. Visuals, you see it clear like it's LASIK. If shit don't work out, then it's back to the basics. And one time for the one time, we got to do it because Frosty not in the building. So we got to make sure that we still represent for the homie. So y'all got to take a little bit longer to enjoy this. Just getting started, I didn't even get in my bag Man, I won't think with you niggas, but y'all steady hating Don't talk about popping no tags I spend the block cause I'm patient Come back in the year and that check that you wrote to get cash You wanna smoke with the demon, well now you done seen it I hope that you ready so mad Cause they see me on the come up, I'm just getting started I didn't even get in my bag Man, I won't think with you niggas, but y'all steady hating Don't talk about popping no tags I spend the block cause I'm patient Come back in the year and that check that you wrote to get cash You wanna smoke with the demon, well now you done seen it I hope that you ready to clash Yeah Huh, graduated from the streets at the top of my class. my class You won the world and let's get it I told you I'd live it, all you had to do was just ask I know before I was chilling, just trying to get millions Now all of that shit in the past I take it up to the ceiling, however you willing Just so that you ready for class Run down, not do this shit with no mask no If they won't call it a race, we gon' lap them Cry like a baby when you get back at them They here for the now, but they ain't never gon' last Why? Slow through my life like a turtle But you get too close and I'm ready to snap Rules to the game and they all universal If you break a rule then you never come back Huh, living my life Life, I'm just chillin', big plate, I'm gon' eat, they gon' eat out the trash huh. Once they find out you a clown, gotta leave out of town and you never come back I sit around many counters, I'm loving the sound that it make when it get to a stack And I show nothing but love, but if you a hater, then fuck y'all, I know I'm so mad Cause they see me on the come up, I'm just getting started, I didn't even get in my bag Man, I won't think with you niggas, but y'all steady hatin', don't talk about poppin' no tags I spend the block cause I'm patient, come back in the year and that check that you wrote to get cash You wanna smoke with the demon, well now you done seen it, I hope that you ready so mad Cause they see me on the to come up, I'm just getting started, I didn't even get in my bag Man, I won't think with you niggas, but y'all steady hating Don't talk about popping no tags I spend the block cause I'm patient, come back in the year And that check that you wrote to get cash You wanna smoke with the demon, well now you done seen it I hope that you ready to clash Honey K play, honey bun K You don't want smoke with this right here Know what you say, swing by your way Get caught in my headlights like dear Watch what you say, don't become prey And then that niggas is so damn weird I'm from the bay, he from upstate Told you before that this all year Flow so sick, no suit Big business, no suit Sedan truck, no coupe Long leg room, big shoes Mirror crop, my mood All my ops is food All my ops was fools Hard cold like ice cubes Always woke, no snooze All this smoke, no booze All good days, no blues Except for what I got in pocket Cause you know I'm gon' get it Leave me alone with your home Fuses get blown Cause I'm gonna grow in it I stay with them plans You stay with them zans So you might be gone in four minutes Don't blame me for all of your goals unachieved You just a whole nigga Why they so mad? Cause they see me on the come up i'm just getting started i didn't even get in my bag you know what i'm saying just like one time for the one time for frosty mcnasty and you know we gotta drop a bomb for the bro and make sure that he get well soon welcome back though everybody to the green table podcast as y'all know as y'all know I'm going to hold it down in the meantime while bro recover. Y'all ain't got to worry about it. We still going to be here on Sundays. We still going to be getting active. We still got to open up the lines to let people come in and show their grows and all the other fun stuff that we enjoy doing over here at the green table. But it's just, I'm going to just be solo for a little bit and it's okay. That's the good part about having two people when you're running the podcast. If one got to go down for a second, somebody's still here to, to hold it down for the gang. What up, though, everybody? Um, hope it's been a great week for y'all. Uh, I hope that the music got y'all inspired and ready for another great show. I hope that the energy is well with all of y'all and everyone is feeling good. Yeah, leave me alone with your home. Them fuses getting blown. 
Yes, uh, but uh, another great week down. Yeah, another another great week down. Um, starting to get a little colder. That's what made me come up with the topic of today. We'll touch on that later on. Um, but the the grows are going great. Uh, I'm seeing you. Am I the only one that's that's noticing that almost across the states? This has been a really late harvest season for a lot of people. A lot of people got to really push them boundaries this year and be able to harvest way later. Like the like depth season normally is a lot earlier. Depth season is normally croptober. People been able to push them depths on. I'm seeing I'm starting to see some finished flower in some of these uh greenhouses. And god damn, are they looking good from being able to go like this extra like four weeks basically? It's been like an extra month added on to the to the depth calendar. I'm seeing some amazing quality coming out of greenhouses all of a sudden all of a sudden and that is just fucking dope that is dope it's dope and scary all at the same time dope and scary all at the same time because like well because if you live somewhere where there's winter and you know that there's going to be snow whenever it's that warm for that long that means you about to get smacked with snow if, if it gets colder earlier it just may be a cold winter but when when it's warmer that long you already know you about to get smacked the bags going crazy cheap now the market that flooded yeah, but uh, this uh, again, this happens every year. Uh, and that's not saying that all the depths that came down is good. That's not saying that all the rounds that came down is good. That's not saying that everybody chose the right strains to be growing. That's not that's not saying that everything was just spot on perfect for everybody. So, yes, the things will be flooded. But I mean, people get tired of the bullshit quick. Uh, like, like it's good to have this for cheap. It's good to be able to get this for the low for right now. But how long will people smoke that after being exposed to some of the fire that we've had over the last couple of years? It was like since the uh, since the Rona, now I'm saying, came around and people had to stay home a little bit more. People started focusing more on their grows. We saw quality skyrocket. Like we we started seeing quality that was through the roof. So uh, it is a lot of booth going around, but. Uh, is as many people going to want it after being exposed to some of the best flower that we've seen <laughs> and, and grower history recently? Uh, you, you'll you'll have your twos and fews. You'll have your twos and fews, and eventually it'll just settle back out. And a lot of people will regret the fact that they ran a whole bunch of a booth. Uh, a lot of people ran a whole bunch of nonsense. And even though you have a lot of it, doesn't mean that people want a lot of it. So uh, it, it happens. Of course. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell to the yeah. And people are getting tired of it rather quickly. Like you're starting to notice that uh, uh, people are starting to say, man, I'll pay a little bit more if you got something better. Like that's that that's music to a grower's ears right there. You guys need to start stagnating your harvest to be able to uh, take indoor rounds down right around the time when you know that the market's getting ready to be flooded. Even if you have to sit on that indoor run for a couple of weeks, even uh, um, um, even trust me, you're going to have some outstanding quality during a time where there's only depths around. So you guys who are the home growers, again, this shit. It's all based around the home growers. Like uh, commercially, uh, things don't exactly change. Like the dispensary still get filled, the 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 shelves still get full with all of the depths that they call indoor. Um, all of that is still gonna happen. But in your local areas, that quality increase that they got from you guys, that yeah, that was you guys. That's why. <laughs> that's why earlier I had to had to get my flame on for all of you tank guys. Yeah, yeah, we could touch on that because I know everybody was mad about it. Yeah, I was hating earlier, hating on all of you tank guys, all of y'all, because y'all keep on coming with the fire. So yeah, I was hating. Bruh. Bruh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't get mad at me about it. No one told y'all. No one told y'all to be in these four by eights and these four by fours with these pretty ass grows and these big ass nugs and just solid top to bottom frosty and all sorts of shit. Like you, you, you're you looking at the one stem and you're seeing all the buds and you like, God damn, this look nice. Then you see another little other little buds in the background. You like, damn, what facility is this? And you scroll to one of the other pictures and you see they in a four by four. You like, nah. Oh B. my God. Nah, B. Nah, B. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. I, I I seen a 300 lighter the other day. A 300 lighter. Couldn't compare to none of y'all four by four. So a lot of y'all worried about that legal market coming in. You guys are worried about recreational passing. They flower ain't fucking with none of y'all's. None of it. None of it. They gonna move in, invest millions of dollars, 
have the rug pulled right underneath them from the local guy down the street in the medical side that's a caregiver uh and his four by eight crushing you gotcha bitch crushing <laughs> crushing y'all god damn what you think about cookies dropping them seeds i have no idea what you're talking about put me on put me on yeah yeah put me on that episode in burner series was dope yeah shout out to the motherfucking collector i finally got to go and see that after y'all put me on to it uh yeah yeah shout out to the collector and it was so dope to go back and look at his interview where he was talking about the dead ass and he was talking about uh uh this idea he had of bringing that gas back and to now see him over on burner's channel that was that, that was heat that that was fucking heat but yeah it's gonna be a lot of millionaires moving in same way they did in Cali. It's going to be a whole bunch of people moving in. But here's the difference between California and a lot of other places. They have a massive grow culture like that. They have the weather for it. They have everything like their grow culture is massive. So it's going to be the most competitive market over there. But in other areas, we talking about like Michigan, man, the fucking caregivers run Michigan. They can say what they want to about the recreational market. You could talk about dispensaries all you want to. If you ask about who truly and we mean truly runs Michigan, it's the motherfucking caregiver. That, that's who runs the market in Michigan. And, and, and the rest of the facilities, all they're doing, all the rest of the facilities is doing is simply copying what the local caregivers is growing and trying to do it the same way, but they ain't got that same love for the plant. They ain't got that same care for the plant. They ain't got that same love for the people that's going to be getting this plan at the end. They ain't stuck to the same type of mentality that those commercial people are doing. Oh shit, we got Jariah Black in the motherfucking building. She done came through and, st and tiptoed in her Jordans right into the chat. Ain't even see her. Shout out to Jariah Black. What's up, sis? Yeah, so you guys shouldn't be as worried as you're thinking when when, when it comes to the recreational market moving in, man. The, 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 yes. Yeah, there we go. Boom. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? Now, the other people can talk about what they want to talk about, but we know who run the Michigan market. When we looking at flour in the Michigan market, that shit's not coming from the wreck side. Ain't nobody got no dispensary bags that's sealed and you guys can't even smell it. You can't even see it no more. They trying to make it to where you guys can't even see the flour before you guys get it. So when we're seeing flour and we're seeing these strains being grown and all like uh, who made the world fall in love with like Han Solo burger and Donnie burger and the rest? that was Michigan that made us fall in love with that. Like, yeah, GMO was booming everywhere, but where did I see GMO being produced the best and the most at Michigan? So when you think of certain places, they're going to, it's not even going to be no competition when it comes to these other people. Y'all just have to fight for those rights to keep the caregivers around and pay attention to the actual laws that you guys are fighting for. Y'all got to read the fine print. You got to read the fine print because sometimes they'll throw a, proposi a proposition out there and commercially this proposition is viable. But at the same time, this might be knocking the, the mom and pops out of there. This might be knocking the caregivers out of there. This might be knocking the home growers out of there. You guys have to pay close attention. You guys got to be down there and the meetings. We got to do everything we ain't used to doing. Because before we didn't have to do none of this because it, it wasn't legal. So <laughs> there was nothing to go down there and fight for. And you definitely don't want to be showing face. But if you guys want in on this, we got to stop playing. It's going legal. They, they fighting for this in courthouses and shit. That means we got to get down there in them courthouses. Well, we we going to have to do that. Ain't no more standing in front of capitals and just smoking joints and saying, hey, we want the right to smoke. They gave us that already. Now, next step is to keep the mom and pops around. That's the next step. That's why I also don't get sometimes why they get so mad at Burner, because uh, when Burner enters the area, that that boy going straight to all of the people who've been there. He, it's not like he's coming there and bringing people there to, to to run it there. No, he's coming there and being like, who's established here? I bet I'm going to link up with y'all. Shit, your, your name will be 300 times bigger after you associated with us. And I think that's good business deals right there. I think it's a great blueprint for everybody to be able to follow. I never understood the dislike for Burner. And whenever I ask people what that dislike actually is, it's constantly shit that don't make no sense. Like, yo, yo he's not a grower. Uh, I don't remember Burner ever actually saying that he was a grower. Bruh. Like you mad at him for not doing something that he never said that he did. I, 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 I'll never understand it. 
I'll never get it. When somebody laid a blueprint out, it's a major thank you on the behalf of the people who can see this happening. Think about all the brands that came after he showed people how to really market strains, how to really market a brand like most of that came directly from him. And if people don't copy that method, you guys are absolutely nuts. You guys are absolutely nuts. Shout out to everybody who is in the chat. Uh, let me see if I missed any questions up in here. I, I, I never got what the dislike was for. Um I actually appreciate the fact that he goes on interviews and just simply gives us the information. Like <laughs> most people, hey, take my master class for nine hundred dollars a week and I'll teach you how to make your own brand. Burner will sit down with the breakfast club, roll one up and tell you everything. Like, <laughs> yo, it's like, man, I, thank you. Thank you, because everybody else going to give you the master class uh, for nine hundred uh, uh, for a small fee, a small fee of $900 per week. I'll show you how to get your own brand going. Yeah, for a small fee of $900 a week. I got you. How is gumbo smoking? I don't know that gumbo is a strain. I'm just going to be 100 with you. Um, I'm in New York. Gumbo is gelato or anything purple that smells like it. I'm just going to be 100 with you. Unless somebody can tell me what the strain of, of gumbo actually is, unless somebody can tell me what the cross is and maybe I missed out on something, um, I'm in New York. Uh, I have no idea. And you will never see the same gumbo twice. You will never see the same gumbo twice. If, if it's purple, pretty, smells like gelato, it's gumbo or runts. It's whatever you choose to call it at that moment. It's whoever went out to Cali and got whatever packs they got. When they come back, uh, they're just going to name it something. Uh, yeah, gumbo is an NY brand. I know. I'm very well aware of that. But uh, when people ask me, how's it smoking? I don't know it to be a strain. Like, I don't know it to be a strain to be able to be like, yo, it smokes like this because you're never going to get the same one twice. So uh, that's that's just how that works. I have no idea. Whoever whoever gets the packs and decides to name them, whatever the hell they want to name them, it's either going to come out two things. It's either going to be runts or it's going to be uh, gumbo, one or the other. Uh, it just I guess it depends on who you go to and what name they felt like telling you that day. If it's Tuesday, it might be runts. You might come back Thursday and get the same thing and it might be gumbo. Yeah, I, I have no clue. No clue to say how it smokes. Now, shout out to the person whoever came up with the idea of the brand and being able to market it and, and doing all of that. That that is fire. And shout out to him. I hope he gets a whole lot of success. Um, but I don't know, I don't know gumbo to be a strain. Yeah, I don't know it to be a strain. Like when Runtz came out, that was a that was a strain. Like a, the the name kind of matched the strain. Like uh, when Gumbo came out, I was just confused. I was just like, it's just just a brand. I, yeah, surprise, it's weed. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh shit, yeah. So you might come Tuesday, and that it definitely might be Gumbo when you come to get it on Tuesday. You come back Thursday. Gotcha, bitch. Yeah, that, that thing ain't going to be the same thing that you got the last time. And when you go see Taekwon from around the corner, that gumbo going to be different than when you go see uh, uh, Lil Ray Ray from, from over that way. Yeah, it's definitely going to be different. Beast Coast, uh, using the light where you have to change the red when you have to change. Uh, the light that I have, the Grandmaster level tarantula long leg, I believe I have. I think I got the long legs. Um, they have two settings on them. One is for pretty much the white blue light. The other one is for the red light. So yeah, you, you, you don't have to change it, but you might want to. I think Grandmaster level went into more detail on this on his page. So you guys might want to go and check that out. Um, so he could tell you guys a little bit more about that. Cause I think he, dealt with some stretch issues with his as well his stretch weird and veg because of the red light so i, th I think he'll show you how to actually dial that in uh yeah and and i ain't gonna lie new york got some of the best fucking laws that came out so far now there will be some people who jumped the gun and got into it early and thought they was gonna be making millions of dollars already that's sometimes shit takes a long time to roll out when you're trying to iron out mistakes before you already do it. Gumbo, AKA bag seed. That's possible. That's, that's very possible. If gumbo came from a bag seed and if so fire, fire, I don't care. Pop them goddamn bag seeds. Like, man, see what the fuck you find in there. Like 
uh, to me, I don't know what a bag seed is. Like a, th that bag seed was created the same way that a lot of other seeds are created. I'm, grow them shits. I'm growing some right now. How many bud sites per branch do you like to keep when lollipopping? I have no idea. I, I don't need. Look, I know the Jungle Boys said something about that when they were lollipopping theirs. But how can you say that before knowing what size plant somebody got? Like, what if somebody's doing four plants per four by four? Then it's going to be less bud sites that you're going to. It's going to be more bud sites that you want at the top than on average because you're going to have to veg this plant longer and bigger to fill out the space. Now, if somebody's using 16 of them in a four by four. They're going to have to lollipop a lot more because they're they're not going to get no light. They're about to see a green. It. So it's it's. There, there's no definitive answer to something like this. Like you, you lollipop until you feel comfortable. If you're doing two layers of net, lollipop everything underneath that first net. Um, it, but it, it kind of depends on how many branches you have. Are you in a five gallon pot, a seven gallon pot? Are you uh, see a green and are, are, are you in no till beds? Like it, it comes down to a lot of other things. How, how much is the plant going to stretch? Like, cause if you just lollipop in the beginning and you take way too much off and this plant don't stretch none afterwards and you're done. Yeah, you're done. You done cheddar bobbed yourself on your grow. Bag seed has a stigma like outdoor. We got to stop the madness. Yeah, that's a fact. And that's a fact. Some of the best shit we ever smoked in the history of our life that we still brag about, that we used to pass around with our, with our friends before we went to school or after school and was faded for eight or nine hours. Them shits came from bag seeds, like. And, and some of that shit came from like Mexican brick bag seeds. Like, so you, you never know what the hell's getting ready to come out of that. If somebody grows a, a does a grow and they pollinate the grow, uh, but the grow went absolutely horribly wrong and they still decided to sell that flower full of seeds afterwards. You would never think that out of this booth that I just got, that's full of seeds, that some fire can come out of it. But all that happened is somebody fucked up on the grow. Like somebody did very badly on the grow. Those seeds that came out of that actual flower might actually be some shit if grown properly. You have no idea because the person who gave you the flower grew it improperly. So the but you don't know what the seeds from it are going to yield. You don't know what that male passed on. You don't know what other traits that female actually has because the person who gave you that flower didn't care about it. Like in Mexico, you just throw millions of seed on the side of the mountain and you come back and harvest it later after the males done did whatever. Wind beating them up, rain beating them up. Uh, they ain't doing too much to the plants. Now, if you get that in the indoor situation where you're going to baby that plant, you're going to get a whole different result out of that shit. You're going to get a whole different result out of that. See what I'm saying? Can I start flower 11 p.m. to 11 a.m. if I've been vegging 5 a.m.? As, as long as they get in under, I'll say, depending on the strain, as long as they get in under 14 hours of light, they're going to flip. It doesn't matter when you start them. They'll catch on eventually. I'm saying and they'll catch on eventually to they're getting a lot less light at a different time. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And I, I fucking love Kim's. Hey, what's happening with your main? I got hella jelly bag seed. I got guava bag seed, OG Kush bag seed. You see what I'm saying? You're still going to get the same things out of it. It's not even that deep. Make sure I haven't missed any questions. My Jamaican strain, I just <clears throat> brought it back. Was yeah, hell yeah, it's gonna be. Yep, Frosty gonna be all right. He just said he got to make sure he get his rest. That's all. How do you feel about alternative light schedules like eleven and thirteen? I do eleven and thirteen. Uh, the medic grows only have certain settings, and I don't think any of them are 12 12. Yeah, the medic grows it. You, you got to think, uh, most strains ain't getting no 12 hours of light or 12 hours of dark. Yeah, most strains just ain't getting 12 hours of light or dark. Uh, I, we, we talked to uh, Farrell said that about this, and we were like, yo, where did 12 12 come from? You guys could go back and watch that interview, and he said that came from Hawaii, where they have really long nights. Nope, didn't get any of the Titan gear. Missed that. <clears throat> yeah, I missed that one. 
especially yeah that's what i'm saying especially direct light you know what i'm saying so so 11 and 13 all day i ain't got no issues with that scott trapping what's happening Yeah, these uh, you, you guys got to go out and, and look sometimes at how many hours of light these plants actually get. Like, what if it's a couple of cloudy days in a row? What if it's a cloudy, rainy week? Like, what did, you're saying the plants just ain't going to do what they're going to do? They, they, it'll work just fine. Been working some GG4 bag seeds for three years now, then crossed it back with itself twice and another mail from a bag seed. Okay. What's the best way to germinate seeds lit? What's the best way to germinate seeds late to attempts they pop but did not turn into seedlings? Best way to germinate seeds is to drop them in a cup of water and let them float. Drop them in a cup of water, let them float. The tails will come out, transplant them. I like the paper towel method, but I'm slow, son. Like every time I do the paper towel method, sometimes I'll be letting the paper towel dry out or didn't add enough moisture to it to start off with. It just I, I don't know. It just never worked well for me. I just dropped them shits in a cup of water and let them float. The ones that germinate, germinate. The ones that don't, don't. That's it for them. If you can't survive in a puddle of goddamn water, you, you wasn't meant to happen. Super thriving water. That'll, that'll work, too. Heat pad. I, I did notice that uh, if you put it somewhere where it's a little bit warmer, the seeds definitely do a better job at germinating. And that's what some people do forget. They will leave them seeds in a really cold environment. Paper towel good. Sometimes roots will grow through them. Yeah, that that happened too. A couple drops of peroxide. Yep. And I heard this works well if you're germinating a lot of like uh, older genetics. Like if you had some seeds that's been sitting around for a while, that's another good method right there. IH2O2. The only reason that I really don't like, uh, never mind. Yeah, it'll work. Top of the fridge is a good spot. Three days in the dark on a heating pad. Uh, that may work well, too. I just just be careful with warming water up too much when water's stagnant because it could build bacteria that could possibly harm the seedlings. So you, you don't want to be a little careful with that. I think that cold got the last two runs. I got my light going into a Jenny Smart Surge Protector can set whatever time you want. That's dope. I use a restaurant bowl. Okay. Won't the peroxide kill the good microbes on the seedlings? You know, I was, uh, I didn't want to say that. D didn't you hear me say, I didn't want to say that. You know what I'm saying? And, and especially things like H2O2. But I don't want to be that technical. I don't want, I didn't, I didn't want to go that far into it. No humidity in this mother. <laughs> Yeah, that that too, that, that that could work. Liquid seaweed, Michael's warmth. How long do you take ice cream cake? Oh, shit, man, I, ice cream cake don't seem like it ever want to finish. It don't seem like it ever want to finish. Ever, god damn! Like even when you take that motherfucker seventy four days, you still might see some white pistols sometimes, but. I, I took it 70. Yo, what's good? I'm currently in week four of flower, but my temp's pretty low, like 70 to 75 when the lights are on, and it'll drop from that when the lights are off, when people say it has to be between. Why don't you just switch your flower cycles to uh, you're in week four already? You can't. Um, well, in the future, uh, flower overnight. So your lights is on during the coldest part of the day. So your lights will keep the room warm during the coldest parts of the day. And during the warmer parts of the day, you won't have to worry about that. That's why I flower overnight. You guys act like you have to be in the room all night long or something. Like if you if you flower overnight, start at like 8 p.m., you'll still be able to go in the room, do all of your work. But, and then you're fine. By the time you wake up, lights out. Boom. Good. <clears throat> uh florida is 80 80 percent humidity god damn 
do you wait for ambers before you harvest? No, I've never looked at a trichome in a lens a day in my goddamn life. I ain't even gonna lie to you. I ain't even gonna. I, I came into the game learning from production growers. It was just like 63 to 70 days done. Chop that shit down. It's out of here. Yeah. That, that was all I knew. 63 days to 70 days, depending on the strain. Uh, run it, flush it, do what you got to do. And you already know. She belongs to the streets. <laughs> man, yeah, man. I came into this when people like Big Dan and them was on the, the, the goddamn internet teaching you production, production. Like, you 56 to 63 days in current culture. Like, you chop it down. I ain't never seen them look at a trichome. The, 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 the goddamn pack of seeds said 63 to 70 days. This shit going 63 to 70 days. And after that, 63 to 70 Keep days. Keep it on to the streets. <laughs> that's, that's about it. 28% humidity killing me. Yeah, I used to have the same problems before I had beds. Now that I got beds, is is a little bit different. They maintain the humidity themselves. Also, you should look at the front buds, back, middle, sides before harvest. What are we looking for? Just uh to see how well the buds are finishing. Is that just to see how well the buds are finishing? Uh, yeah, I've heard this too, but I don't think it's so substantial that you guys will even notice it. You guys, and, and unless you're pulling massive amounts of power, then then this might matter. <clears throat> oh, the trichomes. Okay. Yeah, I I ain't never paid no mind to them. Sixty three to seventy days, your ass is grass. Like you, any strain that runs longer than that, you out of here. Yeah, that's that. That's about it right there. Buds look dense. They ain't throwing no more white pistols. They solid. Leaves done faded out. Everything is flushed. That shit's done. I I ain't got enough time to be going through this entire canopy and checking everything. I'm usually doing multi strain runs too, and all of those probably don't even finish at the same time. The last time the watermelon mints was done for over a week before the whole rest of the room was done. Guess what watermelon mints had to do? Go the rest of the time with everything. <laughs> uh did you add any humidifiers into the room get a warm mist humidifier to add heat and humidity nice little cheat code i have a 20 week flowering a 20 week oh my god <laughs> 20 week what you think you're gonna do with a goddamn 20 week strain really nigga what you think you about to do? 20 weeks? What's that? Four, five months? A uh, 35, 40, that's four, five months. Nah, hell no. And then I'm doing all of that. Hold up. And then it gets worse. Because I'm doing all of that just for that shit to blast me into interstellar space if it's a 20-week flowering sativa. The moment that you take three hits off of it, your whole brain just Blast off into interstellar space. I ain't taking no goddamn four or five months just to get blasted and lifted off into interstellar space. I ain't, nah, hell no. Hell no. Got me on the intergalactic highway of no return fucking with them goddamn sativas. I ain't messing with y'all like that. I ain't messing with y'all like that. Mm-mm. 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 I did that with uh Vortex from, from Subcool. Yeah, yeah. Tried that shit with Vortex from Subcool. Man, mm mm. Mm 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 mm. Mm mm. Two hits oh in. Oh my God. So it took two hits. Blast off into interstellar space. Nah, I'm cool. I'm cool. Y'all can chill in interstellar space together over there with y'all. I'm going to be uh, I I'm gonna be embedded into the couch on some of them cookies and some of them other goddamn strains that'll sit you down somewhere. Y'all want them strains that'll make you dance the hullabaloo. I'm not about, nah, y'all not. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh-uh. Uh-uh. Nope. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know what's going to happen. You're dead. You're done. You're through.
Yeah, that's the that's gonna be that's gonna be the music for Beast Coast after he smoked. Done for. Yeah, I ain't no good on none of them. Nah. Yeah, Hayes Hayes flowers. I think like sixteen weeks, thirteen to sixteen weeks. 13 to 16 fucking weeks. And I, I that New York City haze, of, of course, I love that shit, but I am not about to spend no 13 to 16 weeks on a strain. I can't do it. Cold killed all of my Larry's granddaddy Pluto. What? No. That's Michael Jackson bad. Pure anxiety attack. Yeah, y'all not about to do that to me. That bet not been your only plant. Yeah, nah, I'm I'm cool on that. Yeah, yeah. There was a couple other strains I smoked from Subcool, and Subcool just got some of the strongest loud you guys have ever had in your fucking life. Uh, Jesus OG wasn't nothing holy about that shit. Like, <laughs> the Jesus OG, it wasn't nothing holy about the Jesus OG. Not a goddamn thing. Not a goddamn thing holy about the Jesus OG. Nothing. And then there was another one, the goddamn nine pound hammer. Yeah, nah. I'll never smoke those again a day in my life. It was nothing, nothing holy about the Jesus OG. Nothing holy about it. And that goddamn nine pound hammer hits you like a goddamn 9,000 pound hammer. Nope. It's worth it, but you can't sell that shit. <laughs> <clears throat> Seven gallon you need to water two times a week. Hell no. You water in way too heavy if you only water in a seven gallon twice a week. You should give enough water that you can skip one day and then they need water again. That's the perfect water balance right there that they could skip one day. So you give them water tonight. Tomorrow, you won't give them no water. The night after that, they'll need water again. That's the cycle you want to begin to get on and your plants will thank you. You'll see your plants thank you right away. Like immediately they'll they'll catch on to the fact that they're getting watered at the pace that they like the most. So you can't do this in beds. So you you, you just guesstimate and, and you want to make sure. Yeah, even in beds. I'm in beds and I water every other day. I give it about, let me think. I probably give it about 15 to 20 seconds per row. So in the four by four, so what's that? Uh, one minute per four by four. That's what you want to do. Give each four by four one minute of water per four by four in your beds. And you'll be perfectly fine with that every other day. Because you're going to soak the beds to start off with because the soil you're going to add in is not going to be it's not going to be where it needs to be when you're adding that soil. Unless you're carrying heavy ass, wet ass soil to throw in your beds, the soil is going to be relatively dry. So after you soak it good, after you soak it good, you go ahead, sow your cover crop, whatever, it starts growing. You'll start to get on that cycle where every other day it just needs water again. Yeah, seven gallons definitely need to drop back. And that's why you ain't giving them that much water. You're giving them enough water that they can skip one day and need water again. That's it. Enough water to skip one day and need water again. See, I can't get into all of this. I'm not this smart. I'm not this intelligent. I'm not doing this kind of data. Like, I I don't know how many liters or quarts or gallons. I, I have no idea. I, you guys know this. You've given them too much water one time, seen all that goddamn runoff afterwards. So you bite back on the time a little bit. And if you still give them that much and you're getting a whole bunch of runoff, you bite back on the time a little bit more. till you find that comfort zone where they could go one day without needing water and then a the day after they'll want some water again. And it's not that you see they want water again. You just know if you let them go two days, they're going to be too dry by the third. That's the reason that you skip one and then do the other one. Yeah, see, I ain't got time to be going through. Yo, I be faded, man. Don't nobody got time to be doing this level of math when I'm just trying to get some good flour out of my car. Got time to be thinking about no quarts and gallons and all of this other. I got enough metrics to worry about all of these milliliters per gallons and all that. I ain't got time for Bruh. it. Yeah, I ain't got time for all that. I'm slow, man. Bingo. Bingo. 
And then you might water them and they might get up to like 60 and then they go right back down and then you water and they get right back to, I, I equate it again to instead of filling your gas tank up and then letting it get to E before you fill it back up again, you consider half a tank E and you keep it between half a tank and full. That's the, that's the perfect zone right there between half a tank and full. And you got to think if your temperatures are right and the room is warm enough and you got good airflow, you got that cover crop, you got there. There's other things that's going to be taking that moisture up. The plants are also going to be drinking. So you guys, uh, you guys will figure this out as time goes on. Anyone who I've seen where they're having trouble in soil, like 98 percent of the time is because they've been giving them too much water. That's that's the biggest issue I see in soil and giving them too much water can show up as so many different problems. Like uh, the, the, the leaves might turn in. So you might think at first, like maybe this is a nitrogen toxicity, but you also might think maybe I'm not giving them enough water and they're wilting. And then you might give them so much water to the point that they're actually wilting. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? I know I gave them water. I know they got water. Why do they look dry like they don't have no water? Because you done drowned them out. 98% of the problems I see in soil grows is literally overwatering. Overwatering. Most people are overfeeding. It's always overwatering. Everyone's so heavy handed on the water because you hear this crop steering, whereas uh, give them 97 million one milliliters shots of water a day. You guys start hearing all this madness and you guys forget about what the old growers used to do. They used to give them water, come back the next day, look at how pretty the plants is, get the fuck out the room, come back the next day and give them water again. That's what the best growers did that, that produced that real Zaza for you where you had the 0.5 in your pocket and stunk the block. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what them growers was doing. That's what them growers was doing. Number one problem is always overwatering. Everyone is so heavy handed on the water. I get it because when we first came in, these people were telling us to put a gallon of water in a five gallon pot. And it's just like, nigga, a gallon? Like, and, and I, and again, I, I used to be doing this, like a gallon of water in a five gallon pot. And you wonder why you're not hitting the yield you're supposed to. The plant look like it got nice buzz, but when you harvest it and hold it up, the plant feels light. And that's because you done macerated the roots in the bottom. They don't, they don't drown the holy hell. Soil is a hundred times heavier than goddamn cocoa. So you guys are just crushing these roots. They don't have no paths to get through. You start developing salt pans because you guys are also feeding nutrients on top of it. And it's just pure chaos afterwards. Yeah. Then you got fungus gnats in there eating your roots because you guys are overwatering. All of this happens from just giving your plants too much water. Cause you can't chill. You ain't got no chill button. You ain't got enough sense to be like, let me give them a little bit of water. And if they need more tomorrow, I know that I didn't give them enough the day before. So why don't I double the amount I gave them the day before? Boom. Come back the next day. Okay. That was perfect. They can skip a day. Now come back the day after they might be too dry. So you'd be like, okay, so double plus a quarter of the amount I gave them that first time. Boom. And that's the perfect amount. And you just keep doing that start to finish. And you guys will knock it out the park. You've been seeing me do it. You've been seeing me do it. And, and this is the exact method that I do. I give them enough water that I can dip for a day and come back and they need more. Now, can they last two? Maybe. But on that third day, things might start having some issues. You might start getting some dry pockets. Now you got to, yeah, you don't want to deal with none of that. Keep that soil happy at all times. Yeah, 20% runoff and all of this other madness. They, they was telling me in Coco, they told me that you need to water cocoa until runoff. Every time I've done that, I've winded up with plants that got overwatered and died and suffered from getting too much water. So instead of watering until runoff, I watered until I barely had any runoff and got the best rounds I ever got ever. Plants are just amazing teachers. They show you what they want and you just deny it because some guy on Instagram showed you something else and gave you this chart and showed you a big ass room where he's not even implementing that because if you factor in the length of his room and you factor in the size of those plants and you factor in how much water is actually running off and you factor in that they're in rock wool and you're in cocoa in a pot like when you when you start to look at all of the other things it's just like come on bro come on bro do you got 19 Quest dehumidifiers up there pulling uh, moisture out because that moisture that's evaporating from the soil is going to, or whatever medium they're using is going to keep happening because they got four goddamn uh, Quest units up there. That, do, do you guys have all of that? You guys have all of that? You got 60 lights in the goddamn room helping to evaporate even more water. Do you guys have that? No? You in a four by eight? 
not ever dealing with any of these goddamn problems. So you can't take no advice from those guys. Those guys are dealing with different levels of problems. And take it from a guy who went from like a four or five light room to a 25 light room and the problems instantly became major. The small shit that used to happen in your regular four or five light grow becomes massive when you're talking about adding 20 additional lights to it. 20 additional. The plants are drying out faster. The room is drier. Like all sorts of things start happening. Also, now, now you need more fans, but now it's getting too cold because you got more fans and they're moving more air. So maybe you need less fans, but the canopy is too thick. So now you got to find a way to use to, to leaf strip properly or maybe not use as many plants as you. So many different problems start to turn up when you add 20 lights to a goddamn room. That's a fact. Yeah, that's a fact telling you guys like you take advice from people who actually care to have your grow come out good i care to have you guys grow come out good that's the only reason i dispel these myths that's the only reason that i even take the time to tell you guys all of this because i'm tired of seeing y'all fail following the instructions of people who have 80 light rooms you don't have 80 light rooms stop following instructions from people with 80 light rooms if I did that, I would fail. If I tried to run my rooms like Frosty and he got six extra lights in his room, I'm going to fail. I'm not dealing with the same problems that Frosty's dealing with. Each of his lights got six extra. Each one of his rooms got six extra lights. That's six extra trays. That's six extra trays of plants giving runoff. That's six extra trays of plants perspiring. So, yeah, I can say I get away with not being able to use a, a dehumidifier. I don't have six extra trays of plants perspiring. I don't have to I don't have to water as much as he do. I don't have as many plants as he has. All of these things factor in. And I don't I don't want you guys factoring things in that ain't going to matter to you. You're not in a 10 light room. You're not going to have the same issues. And that's OK. That's OK. Don't take on other people's issues for no ass reason. <laughs> it is pointless. Even if you got an 80 light room, you ain't got to use Athena. Use whatever the hell works. I can't wait until I see a grower that's just so gangster that he decides to be like, you know what? I'm going to go right down the street to my local hydro store and I'm going to do general hydroponics, the whole goddamn lineup, just the basics, the, the three part lineup of general hydroponics. And I'm going to crush this goddamn room. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lie to you niggas and tell y'all that, yeah, look at this Athena crop that I just got. And it was and it was uh, general hydroponics the whole goddamn time. Like general hydroponics works like Athena does not make a goddamn lick of a difference to me. Uh, Canna, Athena, uh, no, no matter Jack's, uh, whatever you want to use, use the cheapest version of it. They all fucking work. You act like the plants know that this MPK came from Athena and this MPK came from Canna and this MPK came from Mills. The plants don't know a goddamn difference. They just want the goddamn MPK. You guys are, are are destroying yourselves going over this. Uh, let, let me drop a bomb for Beast Coast dropping bars over here because I'm trying to put y'all on camera. Now we're going to pay these bills and we'll be right back. All right, Green Table family, let's talk lighting for a second. What you're looking at now is the Medic Grow Smart 8. Visit medicgrow.com for you to be able to get the Smart 8. Use the Green Table at discount and receive 10% off. The Medic Grow Smart 8 is a 760 watt LED used for commercial growers, but it's also great for small scale growers. It has the daisy chain options. It has everything that you can need. That 660 nanometer red spectrum to be able to get those really decent blooms even even though it is a full spectrum like those added 660 nanometers just put that extra oomph into the bulk stage when it comes to growing low energy puts off little to no heat you can put your hand right next to it and you can tell that the dissipation of the heat just goes so smoothly that you feel nothing when you put your hands close to it the expectancy is up to 50,000 hours with a three-year warranty on it it is plug and play as soon as you plug it in that thing is ready to go it is said to cover a four by four or a 5x5, five five, but in my humble opinion, it covers a 6x6, six six, no issue. So if you guys are looking for a light as of right now, visit medicgrow.com, use the green table at checkout, and get you a light that not only folds, not only does this light fold, it also has a LED screen that shows you the wattage being used, shows you your DLI, and it also has a built-in timer right to it. So no more of worrying about your timers going out or anything. The timer is built directly into the light along 
along with the dial to be able to get it anywhere from zero to a hundred percent of, of efficiency so you could turn the light up and down at will that is the medic grow smart a visit medicgrow.com use the green table at checkout yeah yeah What does Princess Mine mean to me? We're all royals. None of them are like me. And they don't want to be. We all are and love to be unique. We're not carbon copies of the latest hottest celebrity. I mean, I love B. But she do be way better than me. And she would be no good at doing me. We embrace our natural crown, and we are proud of our natural color. Why change the king's art? We are his princess and princesses. We are his art. I am 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 his art. We are his art. Y'all know I gotta do it one time for the one time. Where did you get the bet? Where, where the g genetics from? What? What the? What's up with your green table family? I hope all is well, and if not, I hope you get well and stay well. Make sure that you visit mirrorcrop.com. That is mirrorcrop.com for all of your souvenir needs. Make sure that you support the channel. Visit the Patreon. Visit Frosty McNasty Patreon. Visit Beast Coast Grower Patreon for all exclusive content and for first dibs on access to the souvenirs. So that is mirrorcrop.com. Make sure that you visit it. Like, subscribe, comment, peace. There you go. There you go. You know. You know what I'm saying. You know. <laughs> one, one time for the one time for. Them. So yeah. Uh, moving into the winter time. Uh, you guys that are in the very colder climates, as you heard me and the homie talking about earlier, you guys are gonna have some humidity issues. So I know what you guys are gonna do. It's getting cold. So you guys are going to add the space heaters into the grow. I ain't got no issue with that. But as you guys add these space heaters, there's going to be this thing that happens where your room warms up, but your humidity hits the floor. As that humidity hits the floor and the room warms up, you guys could just be inviting bugs into your room that ain't supposed to be there the whole time that you're dealing with winter. It's winter time and you're not supposed to actually be having bug problems. But if you raise that heat and lower that humidity, you are literally begging for spider mites to come there and multiply at a faster rate. And I know this is what most people do during the winter time. And especially if you're outsourcing clones or you and your friends is sharing things like you. This is a problem that you guys are going to wind up worrying about. You're going to deal with a whole lot of bug issues come winter time if you don't factor this in. So let's say you got a decent sized room and you may have to add like two space heaters. Add one space heater and one small warm mist humidifier. The warm mist humidifier will keep the humidity where it needs to because the heater is actually going to be lowering the humidity for you and drying the room out. Or, or you could just add two warm mist humidifiers, whatever works better for you. Uh, some guys are really scared of humidity. I'm not one of those guys. Uh, I'm in beds. Humidity is just the name of the game. Uh, Croptober is actually in a very humid season. And there are plants that could just take it. Now, if there are some plants that I have that can't deal with the humidity, they just get in the fuck out of my garden. That's something else. You got to stop falling so much in love with these goddamn toxic ass, difficult to have strains. These strains be toxic as shit. Like you don't want to clone. You don't want to do nothing. Like every time I try to clone you, you don't want to clone. Every time I grow you, you got an issue. Every time it's like, come on, bro. Get that strain the fuck out of there. I'm dying at 69. That That is a little cold. That is a little cold. Man, add that warm mist humidifier. Are you in a tent? 
Are you in a tent or are you in a room? At ATL, we get all seasons in a week. I grow different and use different strategies depending on what's going outside. Bingo. Bingo. And again, and if, if I'm not down there by you, then I'm going to have a bunch of different issues. I'm going to have a bunch of different issues. Yes, please. Yeah, bye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Don't don't nobody got time for them difficult ass strains. You don't want to clone. You don't want to grow right. You always weak. You always complaining. It's always too much water, not enough water. You don't like too much nutrients. You don't like too much light. Bye, Felicia. Get that strain right up out of there. Get that strain right up out of there. Man, get off topic. Get as off topic as you guys want to. Fire away on them questions. I might open it up in a minute for people to come in. We could chop it up together. You guys could actually ask me about some of the topics that you guys are thinking about. Uh, not to get off topic, but y'all heard the new song Shooter yet. Actually, Shooter's been around for a while, and I believe it was Ism that uh, reminded me that I had not dropped that for you guys yet. So uh, shout out to... I don't want to get this wrong for who asked for that song to be uploaded last week. Someone asked for it and I got the song uploaded. So uh, shout out to everybody for loving the music. Trust me, I got a whole bunch of new music coming for you guys. I was getting ready to finish up a bunch of shit and then my computer went down for the council. Now I'm just playing catch up. But don't worry, it's a whole bunch of new music, new intros coming to the show, uh, new everything. Yeah, some plants don't want to grow and I, I ain't got time to be playing around with you. I, I have zero time to be playing around with you. You are out of here. Your ass is grass. I, I had a, a Beast Coast OG that I didn't wind up keeping because she was just so difficult. Turned out to be straight gas fire. I'll be damned if I'm going through that to grow you, though. Like, it it was nice to see you and smell you and know what genetics uh, hold inside of these seeds. I'll pop some more. But your ass is grass. Ain't nobody got time for that. Why would leaf tips droop down? Too much water? It's either too much water or too much nitrogen. So if it's like a sharp down and curl then it's probably nitrogen. If uh, It could also be low humidity. Could also be low humidity. Which light would you recommend for a 4x4 tent? The Metagross Smart 8. Metagross Smart 8. Use the green table at checkout. That's, that's dead serious. Metagross Smart 8. I want to say the Grandmaster level Tarantula too, but you might want a five by five for that. That thing is a monster. That that light is a fucking monster. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. Now you could get the Tarantula and dim it if you want to. That will work too. But but goddamn that Tarantula puts out. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie to you. That motherfucker is a beast beast of a light. If you got some open space though, like you're not in a tent, you're not locked into nowhere, you got a room. Man, that tarantula crush. Yeah, New York City is going to be great when it comes to, to the cannabis business, I think. And shout out to, again to people like The Collector. Those was the people that was behind the scenes really pushing shit for us. Those was the people telling us to get down there and vote, where to vote, who to vote for, what kind of laws were being passed. That was people like him. So you guys make sure that y'all get over there and give him a follow on IG and all of that. Look at the, a lot of the strains he's coming out with. He's going to be one of the big names out here for sure, for sure. Uh, did I miss a question? What new strain are people trying out? Uh, we don't follow the hype over here. Like we, we, Frosty drop a whole bunch of new shit. We running all of his shit. That's the newest shit that we got. Whatever Frosty dropped recently, uh, that's what we've been hunting through. Uh, that's that's what we fucking with. I don't know what the hottest new thing is for everybody else. They still smoking runs, if you ask me. Yeah, I could say that, but that the, the quality is definitely top notch. It is a it's a monster of a fucking light. I'm not going to lie to you. They stopping people in New York? Stopping what people in New York? Yeah, it depends on which people you're talking about. Support small craft growers all day. That's what we in it for. Yeah, people still stuck on runs. They haven't changed yet. Haven't changed yet. And to me, it's a goddamn shame. All the other good ass strains out here.
plat lemon cherry gelato yeah uh oreos um i don't want to do that to them uh uh gumbo um yeah sometimes you got to think before you guys say and do things like like I, w I wanted to do the gumbo thing but that's an actual brother's brand out here and i don't want to make it seem like i'm actually shitting on the brother's brand uh what, what, if you ever see me say anything like that it's strictly just about the strain itself not the brand it's, it's never about the brand it's about the strain itself which is in a strain that lemon cherry gelato bussing I ain't gonna hold you. Lemon cherry gelato bussin'. I ain't even gonna lie to you. Shout out to the motherfucking grower. That goddamn lemon cherry gelato is some shit. Shout out to the guy who found that or however he went about it. That was he. Wazam. Guava girl. Growing pink runs now. Greasy monkey too. Just got some black cherry soda. That's a good ass strain too. Black cherry soda is a, a good strain. Black Diamond G Runts and Jungle of Eden. I've heard of Jungle of Eden. I swear I seen it earlier on Instagram or something. Yeah, Hemi. Oh, oh, and before we go any further, uh, let me get it together. <laughs> Today's tea is sponsored by Beast Coast Grower 420. Today we have a delectable jasmine style tea with a touch of agave to it a, a, a little bit of the the medicinal herbal leaves from the cannabis plant and and, and a couple of a nice drops of mint and and a stick of cinnamon to enhance the flavors and make sure that it enhances the gut bacteria so today's tea sponsor from beast coast grower is again a lovely jasmine tea with <laughs> man drink your motherfucking tea people I was doing a live stream on one of my other channels the other day and somebody saw me drinking out of this cup. I was, uh, I forgot what kind of tea I was drinking. Some kind of, I think I was drinking some mushroom tea, not the mushroom that you guys are thinking about. I ain't make it to that level. I ain't that level of gangster yet. Uh, I was drinking some mushroom tea and it was like, yo, it's too early to be drinking Henny. I'm like, Henny, I don't fucking drink. Goddamn Henny. It's like two o'clock in the goddamn afternoon. Boom, that's what I'm talking about. Get your tea on, man. That shit hit the soul. Uh, Frosty is recovering. That, that's what he's doing. Uh, Frosty is he taking care of himself. He's taking good care of himself. That's what he's doing. Man, shout out to you. Shout out to all uh, everybody for all the appreciation you guys give us for doing this. Oh, this, this tea fire. I'm not even going to hold you. Not even gonna, I'm not even going to hold you. And guess where the mint came from? Take a while, guess where the mint came from? Right out of the goddamn beds. So even when it's wintertime, I still got mint to make my own goddamn teas. Ain't that beautiful? And you could just take the leaves right off the cannabis plant to make your own goddamn tea. And then whatever you leaf strip, if you guys ain't spraying none of that extra nonsense on your plants, you can go ahead and dry those out, throw those in your tea bags too. See, you, you guys got to become more useful with this. And you'd be surprised how good it is and how good it feels for you. Oh, they, they, they said they want the bomb drop, and you know the people get what they want. You know the people get what they want over here. Have you grown Guava Girl yet? No, I have not. I have not grown that one yet. Frosty got so much shit, and then y'all got to remember, like, he's giving me shit that's not even released that I be running, and I be thinking that it'd be released, and uh, yeah, just not. Nah. Tell them in the chat a lot of people don't know NYPD coming. Wait, what? What I miss? What Piff said? Farmer M in upstate two, they cracking down. I missed all of that. God damn it. Yeah, y'all put me back up on game. I missed that. That's the main thing about the podcast is that I, I'm here to tell people the truth. I get asked every day, yo, should I use Athena cloning gel or should I use Clonex? What's your hydro store got? Clonex. Get the goddamn Clonex. What the hell difference does it make? It's a, it's a cloning gel. You act like the clone is going to understand 
This is a thing now. I better root faster. Uh, there are this is from this brand. I better root faster. Like it? No, it's the same. It'd be the same goddamn products rebranded with a different name. I like to stick with the companies that stuck with us because there was a lot of companies that was here, Michaels, Azos, Orca, uh, Clonex that that was specifically here for us when no one else wanted to be associated with us in any way, shape, or form. No one wanted no parts of this grow community. No one wanted to deal with us. No one wanted to brand to us. No one wanted to do any of that shit. But there were some companies that was like, fuck that. We here for the growers the same way. And that's the people who I like to support those, those things that have been here for us when nobody else was. Not the people who came on later and seen, oh, it's money over here because these people will buy something if we say it increases yield by 20 percent like I, I don't want those guys i don't remember when i got into the business that there was a bunch of products out there claiming to increase yield 20 percent. like that just it just wasn't around you, you went and got some general hydroponics or some canna or some uh house and garden whatever the hell you got and you grew your goddamn plants with it like no, nothing claimed to now there were bloom boosters but those bloom boosters just claim to either increase flower sites or or bud density it didn't include increasing your yield 20%. That just, yeah. They've been running in small spots in upstate New York, still operating while they was on their paperwork. Yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah, them niggas stupid as shit. Yeah. Now, I get it. You guys paid all of that money and you assume that you would already be able to uh, be on the shelves, but you ain't. And I, I don't get what the point is in ruining your opportunity before you even get a crack at it. Like, uh... This is what they wanted. They wanted a whole bunch of people to go ahead and buy this license. We ain't going to give you nowhere to let it go. And we're going to see how many people. We're going to give you all these licenses. We ain't going to let you have nowhere to put this flower after you grow it. And we're going to see how many people in the back of their mind. She belongs to the streets. And turn and turn right back to the traditional market so they could go back and take those licenses and give them to the rich billionaires that's coming in and say, hey, we gave you guys a chance and you guys went back and you you, you returned. And the, and the great words of the prophet future she belongs to the streets. Yeah, you guys you guys went right back to it. So it was like a trick. Yeah, it was it was like a fucking trick. Now, for all of those people who thugged it out and was like, man. I just ain't even going to put no plants out this year if we ain't got nowhere to let them go at. I'll just wait for the indoor season. Shit. Those, those guys are going to win. But for everybody else who thought, hey, I got my license. I'm going to go put 40,000 plants outside and New Yorkers are going to love it. All right. All right. I'll be damned if I if I was able to get into this market and, and hit burner status and throw it away just over a year. Fuck that. I'll wait the year. I'll wait the year. Or in your goddamn spare time, if you were smart, you'd have went and got your medical thing and became a caregiver, and then it wouldn't have mattered. She belongs and, to the streets. And you could have kept yourself afloat instead of taking the legal shit that you had. She belongs to the streets. But, you know, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I, that, that's just my opinion on it. My bloom booster is some uh, bone meal. And potassium sulfate, like a dollar a gallon. Fucking beautiful. 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 Because they opened in the major corporations. Now they got billions coming into the states to cut us little guys out. That's if the little guys allow it. That's if the little guys allow it. That's that's really if the little guys allow it. We just got to be there. We just got to be there to fight and to also think that there's two sides of this market. There's a recreational side of this market. There's a medical side of this market. Ca uh, California has been uh, recreational for I don't know how long. There's still medical places all over. There's still medical spots all over California, all over. Who's loading the flower inside of those medical spots? If, if grandma had the chance to go and get some arthritis cream and maybe get a little bit of flour. Do you think she's going to go to the to the medical place down the street, uh, the little mom and pop joint? Or do you think that she's going to be going to the local cookie spot where the line is around the goddamn corner with people who could possibly be armed and uh, yeah, 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 where the streets is? You know what I'm saying? So there, there's always two sides to this market. What we need to fight for is the caregiver program. That's That needs to be implemented everywhere, everywhere. 
that that's what we need to be talking about. Everyone's always thinking of the million dollar licenses. Fuck the million dollar licenses. Leave that for the millionaires that are going to wind up losing big time and, and, and fight for the right to have the home growers that can take care of the goddamn patients. That's what that's what we need to be focused on, because if not, then, yes, we're going to get weeded out of the goddamn legal market because we're going to get priced out of the goddamn legal market. We need to be in on the medical side and, and stay put over there because the laws don't be changing. How, what, what was the plant count for medical grows in California 10 years ago? What's the plant count for the medical grows there now? Guarantee is damn near the same thing. And if and if you got the and if you were a caregiver from back then and you probably just got grandfathered right in past any of the other laws, go watch Jungle Boys and they'll tell you how they was in on the medical side and got grandfathered in with a whole bunch of the law. That that's how they got their chance right there. That no one's thinking of that. You guys are always thinking way too big in a market you don't want no parts in. Big ass market that you don't want no parts in. And if your medical shit gets good enough, you, you you will still wind up worldwide. It will not make a difference. Doesn't matter how you get in, just get in. Whether you're on the medical side or recreational side. Fight for uh, uh, better price licenses for uh, maybe small scale growers and fight for the caregiver program. And if not, we ain't signing shit and we're going to make sure that don't nobody in this community sign shit neither because we the actual heartbeat of the community. So we should determine what laws get passed because we can determine the votes. Because we got the people. We got the podcast. We talk to the people. All of us can make sure that don't nothing get passed. Shit, even the billionaires is about to be mad. Yeah, even the billionaire. Everybody who invested is about to be mad because we, we ain't signing shit. Nah, we don't want that. Fuck it. If it's that or nothing, we'll take nothing. Whatever. We ain't going to get a chance to play regardless. We ain't going to get a chance to play regardless. And not only are we not voting that shit and nobody else is either. Yeah, I don't give a fuck about that. I, I was just speaking for the guys who won in. That's it. Put your money where your mouth is. That's it. Go and talk to the people that's fighting for those laws and and, and shove a couple dollars in their pocket. Help their campaign. Yeah, dispensary's got a bunch of booth. Bunch of booth. Agreed. But who the hell's going to a dispensary anyway? Yeah, ain't nobody going. Ain't nobody over here going to no goddamn dispensaries, paying sixty dollars an eighth plus tax. Absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. I, I don't know nobody who's who still wants to go to. Maybe for like nostalgia purposes, uh, when people first land in like California or something, maybe you'll see those people who wanna who wanna do something. But it, nah. Yeah, man, that shit is over. That shit is over. Oh, I don't know one soul going to no goddamn dispensary. Circle K down the street from me gonna start selling next year. That's crazy. And don't nobody want that shit. <laughs> Don't nobody want that shit. You got to think. Uh, I just seen a, a, I think it's Growers Network or something. Just did a tour recently, and they they had like this rule. I think it's like a ninety day rule or something. If they had any flower that sat on the shelf past like ninety days, they would take it back and give them a fresh batch. And that was a hell of a deal right there. That means the average flower is sitting on the goddamn shelves forever. Because no one's buying that shit. No one's buying that shit. I got to pay damn near $100 an eighth when Lil Tay Tay down the street got the same exact, maybe even better, for $100 a zip. Right down the goddamn street. Right down the street. Got it from the same nigga at the dispensary. <laughs> huh? And you want me to pay damn near $100 an eighth and Lil Tay Tay down the street Got him for a hundred a zip, and he got him from the same person that you got. Ain't nobody got time for that.
Yeah, nah, I'm out of here. Y'all bugging. It's cheap here in Michigan, $65 an ounce all day. And growers do this to themselves. You guys are absolutely fucking nuts. Oh, he gave it to you. He gave it to you for 150. I'm going to give it to you for 140. Oh, he gave it to you for 140. I'm going to give it to you for 130. And then you guys just get yourself all the way down to $65 an ounce and then just start complaining. Yeah, this shit flooded out here. Yeah, because all the you idiots, instead of agreeing to one set price on everything so it doesn't make a difference where the fuck you go, uh, we're going to agree that this is the lowest that these zips should be going. 150. That's the lowest that zip should be going. All of us uh, hit our low point at, at 150. If niggas agreed on that, then the, the farmers would still be good. But no, you guys would rather just keep trying to beat each other out instead of working together. All right. I think the fast food industry d- d- agreed. We're going to have some dollar burgers. We're going to have some. But no one's going to go underneath a dollar for a burger. That, that's the agreement. No one goes under a dollar for a burger. Nope, we can't do that. Nope, because I got to beat you out by $5 just to get $5. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's just, and it's just ass backwards. It's just dumb. You see what I'm saying? Like, we could easily just agree. Like, okay, 150 the lowest that we going. We got to have people with 200. We got to have people with 175, 180, 150. Like, uh, the, and we'll just range anywhere in between. But we know 150 the lowest we going, so we don't fuck the farmers in the long run arguing over who's going to be 10 or $20 cheaper. Life would be great, but no. See, and then you got people like this that's smart. I'm just going to keep the highest quality possible, and the, the price just is what it is. Yeah, SFV is pressure. I don't think SFV ever going nowhere. Yeah, facts. Yeah, you you feel me? Yeah, we're we're, we're fucking dumb. Like we control the entire market, and instead of raising the goddamn prices, we the idiots that want to keep lowering the goddamn prices. Kind of god, what, what sense does that make? What's your favorite munchies? Yeah, don't laugh at me. Watermelon. Duh. You get faded and you want watermelon. Ah, uh, what's happening with your mane? Yeah, and all, all the growers just suffering because of this, and they did it to themselves. They can't blame no other market for this other than themselves. Because they just they just got to beat out the next guy instead of just teaming up with the next guy. And when these goddamn brokers come through, they, y'all can all just agree this is going to be the same price. You can go ask Billy Bob, Jacob, the, the uh, this is going to be the same price. It is what it is. Outdoor, I'll grow a five-pound plant for like 10 times. <laughs> Facts. Fact. It, it'll cost you whatever the clone cost you. Whatever the clone cost you, that's it. Well, we could have if one person didn't always did yet yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah, you, you got to. You got to. That like the, the your snack of choice gotta be fruit if you a smoker. It just has to be. Has to be. And mine and mine is always watermelon. Because it's the best fruit on earth. Well, one of them. Next to jackfruit. Have you guys had jackfruit? How many people in the chat have had jackfruit? Now I need to know. How many of you guys in the chat have actually had a jackfruit? Clones coming soon. They're in a dome now. You guys know everything takes longer to goddamn root when it's 20 degrees outside. So they look great, but they cold. If you're growing, spending a lot of money to, yeah, facts. Yeah, that that that, that just defeats the purpose. Oh shit, we got Grand Master level in the build. Big bomb. What's good with you, man? Yeah, jackfruit is life. Yeah, Jack. Oh, you got you got to do it, man. What? It's the biggest fruit on earth. 
motherfucker like this big like you see you see i don't even see that's why i don't even like talk see see this is why i don't nobody like you that's why i don't even like talking to people like you you down in florida where they just got jackfruit every goddamn where like you, they got the orange one they got all of the good ones down by you yeah matter of fact yeah you about to find me some goddamn jackfruit yeah never get none of that shit up here <laughs> gotta have it yo you know what's crazy they got motherfucking breadfruit up here now. In, in goddamn New York, I went to, to the goddamn grocery store the other day, and sure enough, these motherfuckers had breadfruit. Everybody walking past it, they had no idea what it was. That shit was on the fire later that day. They had no idea. They just walking past it. The Monstera, yep, that was another thing. The Monstera, when I bought it, everybody was like, what the hell is that goddamn big-ass green banana that you getting? Uh, you you guys got to get up on y'all fruits, man. And it'd be people who work in the goddamn store that ain't never tried these fruits. And they work there. No, it's not. I don't. Yeah, I, I, I've seen what they tried to do with like jackfruit. It, it still has that sweet taste to it. So it's, it's not a good meat substitute, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. I think dehydrated mushrooms and a whole bunch of other things are a way better meat substitute than, than jackfruit. I like jackfruit as the actual fruit. Yo, you notice that they starting to get some, some definite tropical fruits here now. That's crazy. I seen that breadfruit. I took all of them shit so goddamn quick. Ain't nobody know what it was, neither. They ain't even fight me for it, didn't they? So you going to take them all, whatever. Um, so how I set the beds up, uh, the bottom of the beds, all of the beds is sticks and wood and in some way, shape or form. Um, on top of that goes a layer of soil and ocean forest and pro mix. And there's also amendments. So there's alfalfa meal, there's 444, humic acid, fulvic acid, some microbes, and there's also some leaf material, just some just some extra carbon and stuff for the bugs to be able to eat on the bottom levels, too. I know most people worry about that, that upper level, because that's where most of the food will be. But that's simply because no one leaves anything at the bottom levels ever. So uh, the layer on, on top of that, I'll do a buffer layer of just pro mix and then I'll do another layer. And in that layer, I'll do happy frog along with pro mix and i'll amend that with 444 and kelp and then there's another layer and i'll do the exact same thing and then after years and years and years it just gets better and better and better it's a super simple recipe yeah breadfruit is just fucking amazing it's fucking amazing my girl said they can get pounds for 300 yeah hell yeah i've seen it too uh dm me on instagram lost coast plant therapy pure crop one or dr zyme what's better mm. i have no idea what are you planning on pheno hunt in 2023 it kind of depends on what frosty comes out with but right now i'm looking for some ogs Aki. Yeah, you 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 know why they won't give us Aki in America? Because they think we too dumb to uh to not be poisoned by this fruit. I, I swear to God, that's the only reason that they make it like that is because they think we just too dumb to not be poisoned by this fruit. Whole goddamn island of people doing just fine on this shit, but they think we just too goddamn dumb to, to not be poisoned by this fruit. Yeah, it really depends on what Frosty comes out with. But uh, right now, I'm just on a hunt for some chems, some OGs, and some cookies. Just to be able to have those back in the staple. Because everything is going to fade eventually. People getting tired of these sweet and fruity-ass terps. People getting real tired of these sweet and fruity-ass terps. I don't fuck with canned goods. I ain't going to lie to y'all. The preservatives that they use and, and canned goods, I'm cool. Yeah, I'm cool. I, I can my own foods. I jar my own foods. 
I store my own foods. I do I do not fuck with canned stuff. Um, boom. I was just watching this on uh, Green Goblin the other day. Just watching this on Green Goblin the other day. Uh, the, tons of methods to be able to do this, and you guys could make this shit by the fucking 30-gallon trash can. How many day do I veg generally? I don't know. I stopped counting veg days. I veg until the plant is big enough to flip. Don't worry. I got you. Yeah, I can't have kandaki. Like, my family might be mad as hell at me. They find me in some goddamn kandaki. Uh, next year's hunt should already be popped. Yeah, I already got some. I, I got a whole seed hunt going right now. Bring back the gas. That's what I'm doing. IG. Yeah, hit me on hit me on IG. Yep. Anybody hopping on Burner's new app? Nope. Uh, <laughs> got enough fucking apps as it is. I'm tired of all of these shits. Um, man, we got so many trees down here. Man, I know you just look everywhere and it's just Aki littered all over the grounds. Trying to run the frosted guava with this frozen grapefruit together. Oh, you over there tripping, tripping. Too many Aki trees down here. Yeah. It man, it, it gotta be good to be in areas where there's just a lot of fruit trees, period. Cause if you live in New York, it's like unheard of. Like I show people my fruit trees, they've never seen fruit grow on trees. Like you they have no idea. Most people still think pineapples grow on trees. I'm gonna just be a hundred with you. Like the average person does not know that pineapples do not grow on trees. And they eat pineapples all the fucking time, religiously, on a regular basis. Like, they, they love pineapples. They like it in their drinks. They like everything about it. And they still think it grows on trees. They've never seen it grow. Most people have never seen any of their food, uh, any of their food grow. See, this is why I garden no-till, because you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about this. My round's been free ever since I amended the beds. I was three rounds ago. Um, yeah, hell yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Most most people have never seen this. They they have no idea. And, and for people who who like grow fruits or have just been uh, if you're island people and stuff you know all of this but the average person does not know all of this they they have no idea uh the beds have um rice hulls in them that's how i feed my silica and everything but we facts facts most most people have no idea how shit grows yeah ice cream cake is just it's different yeah i just use rice hulls to feed uh silica Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen all oh, you following the same. Uh, yeah, yeah. I seen that, too. That was dope. Yes, he most certainly said this because it's heavily acidic, but uh, it just depends on how much of it you eat because some acids you, you definitely need. Uh, that's why they'll use certain acidic foods to kill parasites when they're when they're cooking with it. Like it, normally you'll see a ham with some pineapples on it. That that wasn't for flavors. That was for the acid to be able to kill a lot of the larvae and bugs and stuff that comes inside of these animals. So your body actually tells you not to eat too much pineapple because it'll burn the shit out of your mouth. So it's a limit to how much of it you're going to be eating anyway. But you got to remember, Dr. Sebi didn't get to test a whole lot of fruits, a whole lot of fruits. Yeah, there was a whole lot of fruits he didn't be. And 
and he kept in mind how America does people. So there was certain things that he just tells you just to stay away from. Because it's easier to say that than to break down why. Yeah, pine, it's acidic. It, 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 it'll fuck your mouth up. After, after eating too much of it. Always a law of tolerance, yeah. But but some acid is always going to be good for you. Some acid is is definitely good for you. Shit, your stomach is at is a city. But I love Doctor Sebi though. Shout out to the to the man. Uh, let me drop a bomb for Doctor Sebi. The goat. That's why he's the goat. Yeah. Shout out to Doctor Sebi though. Yeah, moderation is key for everything. Yeah, bingo. That's what I think Dr. Sabi's goal was, at least to get the conversation started. And then other people can go behind him and be able to perfect it. First is the worst. Second is the best. That's how it always happens. Somebody makes all of these. Uh, they Somebody goes and lays the groundwork and then somebody picks up and, and carries it from there. Yep, that could work, too. What up? What up? What up? pineapple the only fruit that eats you while you eat it facts people complain about the fruit but it's all be cultivated the genetics are moving forward and people are lost yes always gotta have a key lime water that's just once i seen a key lime power a light bulb that was just it's over for that did the size or quality of your buds change when you stopped using Bloom Booster? Absolutely not. Absolutely. It's what made me so mad is that I dropped all my products except Jack's 321 and absolutely nothing changed when I was still in Coco. Yeah, when I was still in Coco, I dropped all of those extra products. I didn't use any of them shits anymore and absolutely nothing changed. The yield didn't decrease. The buds didn't look any different. They didn't downsize. I didn't have any problems. Everything was, was still beautiful. To hell with them bloom boosters. What up, what up, what up? Yeah, them bloom boosters is a crock of shit. The, the, again, those are people who just come later on and want to dig their hands into this industry because they know that a lot of us are gullible. Yeah, get rid of all of them then. Dump all them bloom boosters. None of them make a difference. Most of them have just as much phosphorus and potassium as your actual base formula. Just, just check it. It's just like CalMag. Like, check, check your base nutrient, and I guarantee you it has five calcium in it. Guarantee you. Look at but almost any base nutrient you want to. It has five calcium in it already. So the most you might need is some magnesium, and that's why they have Epsom salt. Coconut water is fucking life. Yeah, yeah, I, I was here too at one point. I was here too at one point, and it, it just got ridiculous. Then I seen people crushing me and, and using little to nothing. Little to nothing. My local store said the same shit, people scamming. That's it. Yeah, the amendments you use have a ton of fucking calcium in them already. I've only burned my plants by mistake with commercial bloom boosters. Yeah, they're a complete waste. To do this, a lot of people are going to have to go back to gardening organically. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, yeah, Frost doing all right. He just got to make sure he get his rest, man. Yeah, you know me and Citrus Terps do not mix. Me and Citrus Terps do not mix. We just got a love-hate relationship. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah, I, I don't see why not. I'd have to look a little bit more in the dragon fruit before I say yeah, before I say yay or nay. 
I don't see why not, though. Peace, man. Kids like candy, grown folks like funk. That's a fact. I, and I don't even know how that switch up winded up happening because even when I was coming up, like we just never liked that that fruity shit. Never liked that fruity shit. It sounds still good, right, everybody? He good. Uh, I don't think it's my place to tell his business. He's he he good though. He good. He got he he got to get some rest. He good. I, I'll allow him to tell you guys if, if that's what he chooses that he wants to do. Uh, I, it's not my place. I, I don't want to be that guy. Fruity stuff, Ben got old. People are tired of it. Sounds good? Okay. Okay. Yeah, shout out to Black G. For show, for show. I like the sweet gas, though. Okay, I can get with that. And this was that's this is what I didn't exactly know about dragon fruit. Uh it it could be, I don't know. I don't know how acidic it is to say yay or nay on that one. That, that was my problem with it. That's why I said I'd have to look into it a little bit more. Um, because you you really don't want to use anything too acidic for ferments. Lemon is the worst for me. Never had a lemon strain that hit me at all. Uh, Lemonada Rosa, square one genetics, fire. Smells like straight lemonade. Tell them to drink tea. <laughs> we got the Cali plug or no plug out here, and all of the packs are fruity. Facts. Yo, what 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 boggles my mind is when I talk to people in Cali, they get nothing but fruity shit. When my homies come back from Cali, they got nothing but OGs. They come back from Cali with just straight OGs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm going to go crazy with the ferments this year, though. Yeah, this, this up and coming year, we're going to go crazy on ferments. Shit, I might even have a ferment to sell you guys. Make a veg one and a flower one. Something easy for you guys who are a no-till that just want to be able to boost it up a little bit. But you know me, I'm an asshole and I'm a teacher at heart. So even if I create the shit to sell one day, I'm still going to give the fucking recipe away anyway for you guys who want to make it yourself. <clears throat> yeah, I love the gas. I love the gas. The flavors in the Bay, OGs in LA. Okay. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. Okay. K and F is definitely the way. What does S1 and F1 mean? S1 is a strain reversed to itself. So if I took a gelato and reversed it back to itself, those seeds would be in S1. Or if I reversed two females to themselves, that would be in S1. Now, a male and a female cross is where you'll get the F1 from. Because they'll also count it as S1 if they cross two females. So pretty much it's two females crossed, whether it's crossed back to itself or whether it's crossed to another strain, uh, the, the, the seeds from it are usually considered S1s. But if it's a male and a female and it's first generation, then it's F1. Look up East Coast Growers Mix. Actually, pH in my water helped my plants a lot. Yeah. Uh depend yeah. You you got to know what your pH is. Fermented plant juice, yes. Yes. All, all of this is great stuff because you're recycling shit that you would have thrown away anyway. Like you got fruits that would have winded up going into the garbage. You guys got uh vegetables you would have winded up throwing away. Uh I, I say compost them or turn them into ferments. <laughs> you guys know what's crazy? I've gotten more herms from regular seeds than I have feminized seeds, which is nuts. I have I haven't gotten that many herms from from feminized seeds, but I have gotten some from regulars. Odd how that happens. What type of content does a content creator like to watch? 
content creators watch content that can help them create more content. <laughs> I'll say that again. Content creators watch content that'll help them create more content. <laughs> so we constantly watching the shit that helps us to create more shit. Ah, really good one. Yeah, that's a really good one. It is because like somebody said earlier, as prices begin to plummet, as uh, as the, the cost of everything starts to grow up, uh, the, the thing that's going to have to change is efficiency. Is that it ain't going to come down to nothing else. It's how efficient can you be? And what's more efficient than making a soil that will never be moved again? That's it. You, you create this soil one time and it stays put right there. That, that's it. That's the last of it. No nutrients to feed because you can KNF and Jadam your life away. No more paying for all of these pesticides and all of this other fuck shit they got y'all paying for. You can go ahead and create it yourself. I don't, I don't think it gets more efficient than that, personally. <laughs> ah, shout out to him for the tongue twister. <laughs> oh man, KNF is Korean natural farming. It's uh it's FPJ fermented plant juice. That'll usually be your veg, your veg nutrients. Then you have FFJ fermented fruit juice. That's usually gonna be your bloom boosters. Yep, and you can create them, you create them yourself. I do it all the time. Uh, if I'm right, I got a video of it up on my page, Beast Coast Grower 420. Find it right on my page. I believe you got to hit that wild blackberry shoots. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I got nine blackberry bushes in my yard. I got nine of them shits. <laughs> Plan on doing a lot with them, making jams, a whole bunch of other stuff. And, and we just love blackberries, so we got a bunch of them. Yep, uh, just very high in nitrogen. So you guys got to be very careful with this. Very high in nitrogen. I'm trying to raise bed now with river seaweed, grass clippings, and little limbs and peat. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. I drank a mango smoothie last night, did a wake and bake, and stayed lifted for six or seven hours of a joint. How? You must have grew it. That's why. That's how. Because you'll never smoke anything from anybody else that's better than the shit that you can grow for yourself. I don't I don't care what you guys said. Like, you might like the way someone else's flower appear. You might like everything about it. But it, it's something about it when you grow it yourself. The shit just hit different. It just hit completely different. Sure, I ain't missing nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. My bloom booster turned my leaves brown 0 10 10 with fishy motion. I'm cool on that shit. Yeah, yeah, that shit is strong. Yeah, you got to be careful with any kind of fishy motions. That shit's strong. What's the best pesticide to kill everything but plants? Jadam wedding agents and add what you need as to what kind of pest that you're trying to get rid of. Now, if you're trying to get rid of all of them, then feel free to make all in one. Yeah, facts. Yeah, hell yeah. It, E, but very easy to get stuff like that and for some reason near train tracks i don't know why but uh every time you go near train tracks if you guys just look along the sides of them there's always fruits growing raspberries blackberries mulberries gooseberries you will find all sorts of goddamn fruit bushes near train tracks now there's probably a reason for this i just don't know why Yep, that could that could work too. 
How to get rid of bugs is Saturday line for chicken coops. I have no idea what that is. What's the difference between Jadam wedding agent and basic castile soap? Same, same. Get over to Green Goblin's channel. Green Goblin 510. Green Goblin 510. I think that's the name of his channel. You guys let me know if I'm saying that right. And he literally just did a video on this where he made his own and he went into super detail on it. I think it's like a 20 minute video where he breaks this whole thing down. Tell him Beast Coast sent you. Because I'm, I'm not going to give you guys no secondhand information when I know that that's the guy when it comes to that. So you guys got to go over there and check him. Spam, spam his comment section on that video and tell him Beast Coast sent you. It's an insect killer, and it and it uh, dissolves within five days. That's the good thing about the Jadam wedding agent that uh, it dissolves within five days. That too. I know you guys are allergic to books now. Everything got to be digital and all of that, man. I, I still get hardcover books. I still get actual books, like in case every anything ever happened. One, I got entertainment. Two, I still have the fucking information. I think it'd be crazy as shit for everybody to start relying on technology and technology. Something happens one fucking day and we don't have none of the information anymore. Like, even if we try to keep it orally, it's still not going to work. This shit has to be written down somewhere where everybody could be able to get to. it. I don't care what happened right now. The one thing I'm definitely doing is knocking my bookshelf over, loading all of that shit in and throwing it in the car first. You see what I'm saying? Just if, if the grid fuck up or something, like, how, how you guys going to know what to do? I have books on every skill that you could possibly need. Yo, I swear to God, swear to God, you ever got in the car with somebody and you just happen to look over and he got like a zip sitting in the cup holder or something and you don't smell no weed in the car? That's that new shit. Can you get Billy Kember cut cross with Frosty? Man, if I could get the Billy Kember cut to start off with, you you guys have no idea how hard that strain is to get a hold of, man. That strain is really hard to get. One, most people don't even know about it. Uh, two, no one even talks about it. Like, I, I know one person with it, and he ain't willing to let it go right now. Trust me. If I could get my hands on that Billy Kember, though, god damn, whole rooms of it. That's, that's, that's the best OG out right now next to Jet Fuel. Next to the Jet Fuel OG, that goddamn Billy Kember is next level. It's like SFV on steroids. Yes. Uh, now, here's another good thing about, about the stinging nettle is that uh, when you use stinging nettle, it's an all-in-one nutrient, too. So if you are just to ferment it and let it become a sludge and then strain it and use the water from it, that it's an all-in-one nutrient it carries everything that you possibly need plus a ton of vitamins and a whole bunch of other minerals it just that that shit's different so stinging nettle is amazing for you it's also good for your hair it's good for a host of other things man that they don't understand bro they ain't never had that billy kimber to understand man was it that makes a lot of sense because he's such a heavy OG smoker. Such a heavy OG smoker. That is, man, trust me, one day we gonna land a goddamn interview with Be Real out to smoke. I'ma smoke some OG and talk to the OG. Matter of fact, y'all need to spam Be Real with the green table, now I'm saying, and tell him that he need to get his antennas over here and be with the real ones, because uh, uh, we here for the culture. So he need to come over here, now I'm saying, and, and let us go ahead and get that interview. That would be fucking epic. If your clones don't root, do you try other methods? No, I keep the same method. Sometimes it's just a strain and fuck that strain. Sometimes it was uh, something you did. Uh, sometimes it just didn't root because it just didn't root. Um, that, that's just what it is. How do you get stinging nettle? Uh, you can grow it. Uh, you can source it. That shit grows 
everywhere. Um, or you could order it. Find organic sting and nettle all over the place. Make sure it's organic or you're going to be fermenting pesticides. Lower nitrogen in mother plants. Dill, peppermint, rosemary, lavender, lemon balm. See, he's trying to tell y'all about the jadam, the way that you need to be able to build it to have that that good old, that, that, this, that mix right here. This, this, that thing right here. This is the larvae. This is the, the mid-size adults. It's the full-blown adults. It's all of this smoked. Yeah, drop that video. Yeah, I never had Billy Kimber. Uh, Y'all just don't understand, man. That Billy Kimber so fucking good. It's the OG of OGs. I took a chance on a volunteer this year and it turned out funky as fuck like body odor, stinky cheese and roasted coffee beans. Holy shit. You're going to take hits from the bong when he comes through? <sighs> nah. Nah, not even going to lie to you. I've never owned a bong. I smoked that at one one time and almost died and then I ain't never go back that way. Jeff, you should be clone only. Yeah, Jeff, you should be clone only. Now, granted, compound done crossed it with a whole bunch of other stuff. So you may be able to get like a compound cross and try to find the jet fuel leaning phenol. That that could work. But yeah, I believe it's clone only. Dr. Bronner's is good too. But if you see the amount of, of Jadam you can make on your own, I'm telling y'all, Green Goblin 510, go watch the damn video. And then you guys will see what I mean when I say that is the most efficient way. Made a 30-gallon trash can a goddamn IPM spray. A 30-gallon trash can of it. You're not beating that. And he made it for like pennies on the dollar. If you know anybody letting some of them EBTs lose, you might even be able to. Nah, nah I mean, you just got to pay for the lie. And I'm saying all the rest of this stuff, you can, you, you can nah, I mean, nah, I mean. Know somebody with some of them swipes swipe, that got them food stamps. Now I'm saying you go get the oil for the fritty. Now I'm saying you, I'm trying to tell you some good shit. Go watch the video first. Then you guys will see what I'm talking about. Y'all know I don't send y'all somewhere for nothing. I'm sending y'all to get the good information. That too. And he going to tell you that in the video too. I think he even put the link to it. Yo, and it's just so gassy. Like, if you really love OGs, Billy Kimber is that OG that'll make you fall right back in love with OGs like it was back in the day. That shit, boss. You feel what I'm saying? Now I'm saying it because you're going to have to get you some oils. Now I'm saying you have to get you a couple gallons of them oils. Now I'm saying. And if, and if you're going to go ahead and have to do that, if you know somebody who got some of them stamps, now I'm saying you can... Know what I mean, <laughs> yo, yo, don't judge me. I'm, I feel like y'all out here judging me. Huh? Trying to put y'all on game. They like, come on, B. Stop the cap. Now I'm dead serious, man. Y'all gonna have to get some oils. Now I'm saying, and if you can, all you got to pay for is the light. Now I'm saying, is the lie. Now I'm saying that you could get the oils for free. Now I'm saying. Like everybody knows somebody, didn't they just get people on like like four, three, four thousand dollars worth of them shit? Like, man, take me. I don't need no damn chicken. Take me to the store to get this goddamn oil to spray on my damn plants. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. When I hit the weed, I want to be paranoid, real sativa. Oh, yeah, you 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 a thug. Yeah, you a thug. You might be one of the niggas that boom Tupac. Like you, <laughs> you <laughs> right now. Nah, I ain't trying to do all. Oh, hell no. Ain't nobody trying to go through all that. Ain't nobody trying to go through all of that. I know what you want. You want to hit the blunt right here, nigga. This shit right here, nigga. Right here, this shit, nigga. This shit here, nigga. Yeah, that's what you trying to do. That's that's what you. Try. <laughs> that's the same shit. It's the same shit. They just migrated over from paper to card. That's the same shit. 
You you feel what I'm saying? Know what I'm saying, and they and they just got about like three four thousand. Know what I'm saying so they man they they can get you some oil. Know I'm, tell them you got a party coming up. You got to fry a whole bunch of chicken. Like yeah. <laughs> tell them you got a party coming up, and you and you got to fry a whole bunch of chicken. This shit right here, nigga. This shit right here, nigga. Right here. This shit, nigga. This yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And it'd be a good time to go and get some of the oils and, and, and create you like a year supply of this shit. Y'all the ones that be in here tripping. Don't don't try to blame me. Y'all was trying to judge me for telling y'all to go get them EBT on. I'm saying get you the oils, make you a whole trash can worth of IPM spray. Now I'm saying a whole trash can. Now I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah, the other dude was tripping, talking about smoking them goddamn sativas, trying to be paranoid and shit. I ain't got time for none of that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Ain't nobody got time for that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Come right up to you. Yo, peace, you want to smoke this? This shit had me seeing the Japanese coming after me the other day. I... The wall, I left the wall. Nobody smoking that? Crazy. But extra crispy with a couple of grape sodas. Yeah, yeah, you got to have the couple of grape sodas. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? You feel what I'm saying? Y'all need to go together and go get some of that goddamn oil together and make that. I'm Green Goblet 510, get over to the channel. Y'all going to thank me later. I'm making the same recipe, so y'all don't have to ask me, yo, Beast, what do you use for IPM? I'm going to still send y'all to the same place. Send y'all right to the same place. But we got another episode down. Thank everybody for staying here the entire time because y'all always be in here until the very end. So I got to drop a bomb. And we will be back next time when this video goes up. Y'all make sure that y'all spam this goddamn comment section and tell Frosty to get well soon. And you know, I got to say it for him since he ain't here. So I hope all is well. And if not, I hope I hope that every single one of y'all get fungus gnats and a mutant level spider mite inside of your garden if all ain't well. Peace. Peace.